Congratulations, little monochrome dumb phone. This is your life. After years of great service, you became outdated, locked in a drawer, never to be relevant again. But wait, you were given a second chance. You were removed from the dated visage that held you captive. And now you will live life anew as a smartwatch. Click here, my friends, and be delighted at this transformative process. So, this is the third and final video of my dumb phone to smartphone project, and here are the goals. This time I wanted to add a rechargeable battery and minimize all the wiring as compactly as possible and then make a case for it. Most likely it's going to be 3D printed. And just to clarify my intentions, I'm not doing this because I just want a smartwatch. You can get a cheap one of those for less than $30 nowadays. There's actually three reasons as to why I'm doing this because I wanted to find a useful way to repurpose old technology and to figure out how things work and potentially learn some new skills from it all. All right, soldiers, fall in. The first thing that needs to be done is to take this mess of wires and shrink it down to this size. This is just a simple perf board that I cut to the size of the LCD screen. The goal here is to be able to solder all of your components onto the board in a working order. You can find more details on the project page, but I soldered all the resistors to the back of the perf board and the Arduino, Bluetooth module, and LCD to the front, making sure that they were all connected properly. If I haven't mentioned it before, be extremely careful with this LCD because it's very fragile. Then I took this 3.7 volt, 150 milliamp hour lithium ion battery and soldered it to this USB charging board and regulator. I soldered an on off switch to the power wire and hot glued it all to the back of the perf board. I then connected and soldered the button and motor to the front and I ended up adding a flyback diode to the motor connections for safety. You also want to make sure that the motor head isn't obstructed or else it's not going to vibrate. One thing to take note of is that the battery needs to be connected to these VCC and ground ports on the Arduino, but so does the FTDI board that uploads the code. So what you want to do is make sure that the code is tested out and tweaked to perfection before you upload it, because once everything is connected and encapsulated, it's going to be very difficult to change the Arduino code again after that. Once the code is all set, you can solder the battery to the Arduino and then flip the switch to test it. One thing I noticed was that the Arduino and Bluetooth lights were shining through the back of the LCD. So I added a piece of white cardboard with anti-static wrap behind the LCD to block that out. When I was happy with how everything was working, I hot glued it all into place. After taking measurements, I was pretty happy with the height and width of the watch. They were both just under one and a half inches. The thickness, however, was kind of disappointing. And it was primarily due to the battery. With the battery that I chose, it ended up making the watch about half an inch thicker. So in retrospect, I probably should have gone with the battery that's a little more spread out and less thick. And I'll link to some of those options in the project page. For the case, I'd normally use a full-featured CAD program, but since this is just a quick mock-up, I just decided to use Tinkercad to input the dimensions and draft out a simple square case. I was then able to download it and print it out using a 3D printer. And if you don't have access to a 3D printer, you can use a service like Shapeways to have it printed and shipped to you. It took about three different prints to get everything fitting nicely. And for the finishing touches, I popped in the plastic screen protector from the phone and added a nice sporty wrist strap. Nerd core. All right, so now that it's all over, for the most part, I'm happy with the result, but I would have loved for it to have been smaller, so I'd probably shrink down the battery and use a smaller Bluetooth module for the next time. I would also like to program more functionality into it, like menus, animated clocks, and maybe even some simple games. Who knows, maybe instead of a smartwatch, you can use this platform for a portable retro game system. But anyway, hopefully you all can take this as a starting point and make something awesome out of it. Again, here's a link to the smartwatch playlist in the project page so that you can re-watch or bookmark them. And what ideas would you like me to cover next? Submit or vote for your favorites at tinkernut.com ideas. Click here to watch more videos like this, and if you got any value out of my show and would like to give some value back, please consider liking, subscribing, commenting, following me on social media, or donating at tinkernut.com donate. 
All right, that's it for this tutorial. For more, go to tinkernut.com.